arranged in the ascending order of the id column but if you look at the salary column this is not arranged in any order because the data is already arranged in the ascending order of the id column now on the right hand side you can see an index on the salary column okay and if you look at the salaries they are arranged in ascending order okay and then for example if i want to find out who is the employee who has got 2500 salary you look at this row and there is a row address we pick up that row address and get the row which has got 2500 which is john's record directly okay so this is a non clustered index and this is the table now let's say somebody writes a query like this select star from tbl employee where salary is greater than 4000 and salary is less than 8000 now if you look at this i want all the employees whose salary falls between 4 and 8000 so obviously this query can benefit from this non you know from this index on the salary column because salaries are in ascending order so the database engine qu can quickly narrow down the rows that fit into this category so if it starts at 3500 no it doesn't fall into this category but 4000 falls into this category so it starts from there and takes everything until 8000 and then it has the row addresses so it goes to the actual table and retrieve all the other columns that we are requesting in the select clause so select statements with a where clause can benefit from the right indexes even delete and update statements can benefit now if i want to delete a particular record let's say for example i want to delete an employee whose salary is 2500 now assuming that i have a million records in this table now obviously if i have to pi find all the employees whose salary is 2500 i'll have to look at every record Instead of that, if there is an index on the salary column, 2,500 people with two or rows with 2,500 will be present, you know, consecutive, in, in, will be present in consecutive rows. So they will be adjacent to each other, and it is easy to pick those row addresses and then go to the base table and delete these rows. And along the same lines, update queries can also benefit okay because we are updating the salaries of all people whose salary is currently 7500 we are we are updating that to 900 so all people with 7500 will appear in the index next to each other so get all those rows and update in the base table okay not only select update and delete order by queries okay look at this I want all the employees ordered by their salaries in ascending order okay uh, if we don't specify ascending keyword by default the salaries are arranged in ascending order so now if you look at the index itself the salaries are already pre-sorted so the database engine can simply scan this index from the beginning till the end take the row addresses go to the table retrieve them in the same order so this avoids you know sorting the results during query execution it simply has to scan the index retrieve the row addresses go to the base table retrieve them and there's no you know additional step of sorting those results during query execution which will significantly improve the performance of the query not only sorting the salaries in ascending order even if you want to sort the salaries in descending order the database engine has to simply scan the index in reverse order and then retrieve the results from the table so both order by ascending order by descending queries can also benefit from the right indexes and along the same lines even group by clause can benefit from the index okay now what we are trying to do here we are grouping or we are counting the total number of employees at each salary for example i want to find all the salary i mean the total number of employees who have got 2500 as salary 3500 as their salary and then i want the total number of employees in the next column so obviously to achieve that we have spoken about group by clause as well in our previous video sessions of this video series okay so basically we are grouping employees by salary okay so we know that in the index employees with similar salaries appear next to each other okay they will appear consecutively in this index so counting them will be relatively easy from the beginning till the end scan the index 
find the rows which have similar salaries and count them and simply result, return that result. So group by can also benefit from the index on the salary column. All right, let's look at the disadvantages of indexes. Now, we spoke about the advantages. Basically, indexes help queries to find data quickly. So what are the downsides? The downsides, obviously, additional disk space. Now, if it's a clustered index, you know, here, on the ID column, we have the clustered index, so we don't require an additional disk storage space. But if it is a non-clustered index, the index is stored separately. Now, let's say I have 10 columns in a table, and let's say I create 10 indexes, non-clustered indexes, for example. Okay. Now, as these non-clustered indexes are stored separately from the base table itself, they require additional disk storage. But these days, disk storage is less costly. You know, we can actually trade that for best application performance. So clustered indexes doesn't require any additional storage. Every non-clustered index requires additional space as it is stored separately from the table. The amount of space required will depend on the size of the table and the number and type of columns that we are using in the index. Okay, obviously, if we create a composite index, then there are more number of columns in the index and, and the amount of space required will be more. What is the other disadvantage? Insert, update, and delete statements can also become slow. Now, in the previous session, I mean, in the previous slide, we said that, you know, if we have delete and update records, obviously, they can benefit from an index. But here we are saying insert, update, and delete can become slow. That's because, see, in order to delete the delete or update a record, we need to locate that. You know, that time to locate can be reduced. But then, if the tables are huge and if there are too many indexes, when you delete or update records, then the indexes needs to be updated as well. All the indexes. Now, if you look at this, for example, if you take if you if you look at this employee table in this index, let's say for example, I am deleting an employee with salary is equal to five thousand from the table. Uh, I mean, 2,500 from the table. So John's record will be deleted, 2,500 salary John record will be deleted from the table. Now, when that record is deleted from the table, it also has to be deleted from the index. Okay? So if there are 10 other indexes which are referring, you know, his first name, his gender, city, obviously all those indexes needs to be updated as well. Okay, so that's why if there are too many indexes, they can actually affect insert, update, and delete statements. Okay, so DML statements, data manipulation statements, insert, update, and delete modifies data in a table. The data in all the indexes also needs to be updated. Indexes can help to search and locate the rows that we want to delete, but too many indexes to update can actually hurt the performance of data modif modifications. That's why index tuning is a very important task. You have to choose the right number and type of indexes. All right, so those are the two disadvantages of indexes. So what's a covering query? Covering query, I mean, if all the columns that you have requested in the select clause, now let's say here if you look at the index that we have, we have the index on the salary column. Now, when I say select star from TBL employee where salary greater than 4,000 and less than 8,000, I'm saying star, meaning I want all the columns, first name, last name, salary, gender, city. Now, obviously, these columns, first name, last name, gender, are not present in the index. So from the index, we have to look back in the main table and then retrieve those columns. So there is a lookup involved. But then if I just say select salary from TBL employee where salary is greater than 4,000 and less than 8,000, then salary column that you have requested in the select list is present in the index itself. So here the query is being covered by this index. So that's called a covering query. Now we have spoken about composite indexes in part 35 or 36. Now, when we create composite index, a composite index is basically an index on two or more columns. Now, if I create a composite index, let's say on first name and last name, obviously, if I, you know, the chances of that index covering a query are more. So, basically, covering query, if all the columns that you have 
requested in the select clause of a query are present in the index, then there is no need to look up in the table again. The requested columns columns data can simply be returned from the index. Okay. A clustered index, clustered index, you know, here the ID is the clustered index. If this is chosen, you know, when we execute a query, then a clustered index will always cover a query because all the columns are present in the table itself. So when I say select star from TBL employee where ID is equal to 5, so you are saying star, which means you want all the columns. ID is equal to 5, so obviously it uses the clustered index there, and then it retrieves everything from the same table. It, there's no lookup involved. Okay, so the, a clustered index will always cover a query, and the chances of composite index covering a query are a little more. So covering query is nothing but if the requested columns are present in the index itself, there's no need to look up the base table. So in that case, that index is covering the requested columns in the query. So, in, so that kind of a query is called as a covering query. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.